Hello and welcome to this very short presentation related to gear trains. This presentation is almost identical to the previous presentation on this YouTube channel. The only difference now is that we're going to use a different definition for gear ratio. We're going to use the gear ratio as specified by the awarding body and so as you would need to use within the end of year examination. So essentially I'm just going to outline the revised gear ratio formulae and rework solutions from the previous presentation but now using revised formulae. My personal approach is that the year ratio as specified by the awarding body here is not that which is conventionally used within engineering from my experience but nevertheless we will now apply it to our various problems. Just note for your reference this presentation essentially follows the order of the notes included within our workbook. Here's some basic geometry of a gear. Some important information relates to the pit circle, the pit circle diameter. This is considered the diameter on which two meshing gears actually contact. Pit circle diameter also shown here for this gear. Another important dimension relates to what's called the pitch of the gears, which is this dimension through here. But in this presentation, we will consider simple gear trains, shown in illustration one here. Simple gear trains can change the speed and the direction of rotation, and they also can be used to gain mechanical advantage. And we will consider compound gear trains, shown in figure two here. And compound gear trains are used when a large reduction or a large increase in speed is required. Just for reference, there are other types of gears, such as bevel gears. These bevel gears or mitre gears are used for driving shafts at right angles to one another. Bevel gears shown in this top left hand sketch here. And also the worm and worm wheel can be used. And this is used where very large reductions or very large increases in speed is required. In the top right hand sketch here. Here's the worm gear, and here's the worm wheel. The following is an extract from the awarding body formula booklet, and that's to be used in examinations. As I said previously, the velocity ratios or the gear ratios shown in this formula booklet are different to those you might find within other engineering reference sources, and indeed used by engineers within industry. But nevertheless, we need to use these relationships to solve problems in the awarding body examination. Note the different terminology that can be used. An input gear can be defined as a driving gear. And an output gear can be defined as a driven gear. Also, the velocity ratio is the same as a gear ratio. And here's the velocity ratio that's given in the formula booklet. The number of teeth on the input gear divided by the number of teeth on the output gear. So that's the formula that the awarding body want us to use. So here's some graphical illustrations of the gear trains and the terminology used. The driver is the input gear, shown as gear A in our sketch. It's gear A, gear A, and diameter A here. And the input gear is where the effort or the input torque is applied. The driven gear, shown as the output gear, will be in the sketch below. Output gear B, gear will be, and pitch circle diameter of gear B shown here. That's the gear to which the load or the output torque is applied. In lots of engineering textbooks, the input gear A is termed the driver and the output gear B is term the driven. And as I said before, we often use the term gear ratio, symbol capital G, instead of velocity ratio when analyzing gear trains. But gear ratio and velocity ratio are interchangeable terms. Just note that the number of teeth on gear or A is denoted as N suffix A, and the number of teeth on gear or B denoted as N suffix B. Also notice for reference, 
gear A is referred to as the pinion gear. Pinion is a term used where a small gear wheel, gear A in this case, meshes with a larger gear wheel, gear B in this case. And again note, D suffix A and D suffix B shown in the sketch are the pitch circle diameters. And dimension C shown here is the center distance between the gear axles or the gear shafts on which the gears rotate. So I'm just going to state here the gear ratio, capital G, as defined by the awarding body. So the gear ratio, capital G, can be defined as the output speed over the input speed, or the gear ratio can be defined as the diameter of the input gear over the diameter of the output gear, or the gear ratio can be defined as the number of teeth on the input gear over the number of teeth on the output gear. So we can state the gear ratio using the following expression, just equating the above three equations. And to find the gear ratio, we can use any part of the equations. We can find the gear ratio using the ratio of speeds. We can find the gear ratio using the ratio of diameters. Or we can find the gear ratio using the ratio of number of teeth. So depending on the information given in the question, we have various ways of finding the gear ratio. But again, notice the gear ratio being calculated here is that specified by the awarding body's formula sheet. Here's an example, example 1G. We have a gear wheel labeled X, drives a gear wheel labeled Y. We're informed that gear X has 40 teeth, Gear Y has 160 teeth. We've got to determine the gear ratio, capital G. So using the relationship in the awarding body formula sheet, the gear ratio G is the number of teeth on the input gear or the driver gear, shown here, divided by the number of teeth on the output gear or the driven gear, shown here. So the gear ratio can be stated as 1 upon 4, a quarter, or in decimal 0.25. The second part of the question wants us to find the speed of gear X if the speed of gear Y is 300 RPM. So in the first part of the question I've labelled A here, we use the relationship between the number of teeth on the gears. For the second part of the question, I've labelled it B here. We're going to use the relationship for gear ratio between the input and output speeds of the gears. So knowing the gear ratio calculated above, using our relationship speeds, it's the output gear speed divided by the input gear speed. We can rearrange the equation for the input gear speed, gear x in this case. We simply multiply both sides by omega x, divide both sides by g. So Omega x is equal to omega y divided by g. Insert in the values the speed of gear x, the input gear in this case, is 1200 rpm. So a typical example of how to apply the formulae stated on the previous slide. Exercise 1g, gear wheel a, having 24 teeth, rotates with an angle of velocity of 300 rpm, and this drives gear b. If the gear ratio is stated as 1 upon 8, we've got to calculate the angular velocity of gear wheel B and the number of teeth on gear B. Answer shown in the bracket here. So I'd encourage you to stop the presentation. Temp exercise 1G is very similar to that of the previous example, but I'll show you the solution on the following slide. Here's exercise 1G. I'm going to let you review this at your own pace. It's quite similar to the example. Notice that a sketch has been used. I would always encourage you to sketch out the problem for yourself and extract the information from the question initially and then decide how you're going to solve the problem. Here's the solution.
Here's an overview of types of gear. So I'm going to let you review this slide at your own pace. Just read the slide. It will describe the different type of gear and give various applications associated with this particular gear. Sometimes in the examination you're asked to state types of gear, label types of gear and give applications of where the type of gear is used. So the types of gear we're considering are the simple spur gear and the bevel gears. Helical gears and the worm and the worm wheel. And finally the rack and pinion gear. So again, as I say, I would encourage you just to read this slide and be aware of the information stated. Again, here's some definitions based on the awarding body formula sheet. So we know that gear wheel drives can be used to increase or decrease the speed of the output. So there can be high gear ratios using the awarding body formula. For example, a two to one gearbox will increase the speed of the output. So the gear ratio here is two to one or simply two. And low gear ratios using the awarding body definition, that's a one to two is a reduction in speed. So the gear ratio is one to two or a half. And this is where there's a slight difference between the awarding body definitions and that I would suggest is conventionally used in engineering. In engineering, if I was given a gear ratio of two to one, I would actually consider that to be a reduction gearbox, a reduction in speed. Whereas with the awarding body definitions, it's actually an increase in speed gearbox. So just be aware of that for your future reference. We are going to use the awarding body definitions within the calculations that follow. Just going to mention idler gears very briefly. An idler gear, gear C in the diagram below, this gear here, has no effect on the gear ratio, but does change the direction of the output shaft. For example, within an engine gearbox, an idler is used to change the first gear drive into a reverse gear. So idler gears have two purposes. Firstly, to reverse the rotation of the driven gear. And secondly, to allow smaller gears to be used to span between input and output shafts. So just note here that the idler gear C is actually causing gear B to rotate in the same direction as gear A and also allows it to have smaller gears to span the distance between gear A and gear B. If we didn't use the idler gear between A and B, then obviously the gears A and B would have to be larger and therefore heavier, more costly, etc. to span between the center distances. So that's the two reasons why idler gears are often used. As we mentioned in the introduction, we're going to consider compound gear trains within our analyses. A compound gear train has more than one wheel mounted on an axle. This is shown in figure 2a. Note that both gears rotate with the same angle of velocity as their key to the same shaft. That's the case for gears B and C shown here, B and C shown here. And note that compound gears can produce higher gear ratios without resulting in larger gear sizes as will be required if we're using simple trains. Now for reference, the only difference between these two compound gears is that in illustration A, the input and the output shaft are not aligned, whereas in illustration B, the input and output shafts are in alignment. Gear train B is sometimes referred to as a coaxially mounted gear train. Let's consider the velocity or gear ratio of compound gear trains. The velocity ratio of a compound gear train, as that's shown within figure three, figure three here, is given by the speed of the driven gear, in other words, the output gear, divided by the speed of the driver gear, that's the input gear. So the gear ratio for the compound train shown in figure three is calculated from omega f, that would be the speed of the output gear, 
divided by omega a, that would be the speed of the input here. Exercise 2G asks us to state within figure 3 which are compound gears. Hopefully that's reasonably easy to see. Reviewing the top sketch here, gears B and C are compound gears as they are located on the same axle. So they both rotate at the same angle of velocity. And also gears D and E are compound gears because they too are located on the same axle. Here again is the awarding body definition for velocity ratio or gear ratio. It's the output speed for the input speed. Output speed is omega f in this diagram here. Input speed omega a, the diagram we're given. And this proof outlined here shows how to develop the formula at the bottom of the page in the bolded box, which is the formula for the velocity or gear ratio of a compound gear train. So the gear ratio can be shown to be the product of the number of teeth on the input or driver gears divided by the product of the number of teeth on the output or the driven gears. I remember it, product in mathematics means to multiply. So we're multiplying the number of teeth together here. So basically this equation here relates to the product of the teeth. So in this case, NA multiplied by NC multiplied by NE. They're all input or driving gears in our diagram. That's divided by NB multiplied by ND multiplied by NF. And they're all the output or the driven gears in the diagram in figure three. So essentially this formula here is worth remembering. It's derived using the definitions in the awarding body formula sheet, but it's not actually stated in the formula sheet. So it's worth remembering. You'll see when we come to analyze compound gear trains, how useful this particular formula can be. Just to reiterate, this formula for gear ratio is very much worth remembering. Example 2G in the system shown, diagram on the right hand side here, the motor speed is 1800 RPM. This is the motor, so speed of gear A is 1800 RPM. And we know that gears A, B, C, D have the following teeth numbers respectively. So we're asked to calculate part one, the gear ratio, capital G, part two, the output speed shaft, it's omega D, this is the output shaft shown here, labeled D. And finally, whether the output shaft rotates in the same direction as the input shaft. So I'm just going to show you the solution here, and I'll let you review it at your own pace. So first of all, as always, extract the information from the question. Notice that gears B and C are compound gears. So this is the compound gear shaft for gears C and B. So they both rotate at the same angle of velocity and in the same direction, as they're both keyed to the same shaft. So for part one of the question, we have to calculate the gear ratio G. So I'm going to use the formula product of the number of teeth on the driver gears divided by the product of the number of teeth on the driven gears. So our diagram NA and NC are driving. So gear A drives gear B and gear C drives gear D. So your driven gears are NB multiplied by ND. Notice that the number of teeth are multiplied together here. That's what product means in mathematics. They're multiplied together, not added. Sometimes you add these values, but they're multiplied. So here the gear ratio G from the awarding body definition evaluates to be one upon 12, sometimes written as one to 12. And using the awarding body definitions, that's a reduction gearbox. In other words, the output speed is slower than the input speed. Part two, we've got to calculate the output speed of gear D, this time using the gear ratio relationship speed of the driven gear, that's omega D, gear D, divided by speed of the driver gear, omega A here. So we know the G value is one upon 12, 
We know the input gear speed 1800 rpm we can calculate omega d so simply rearranging the equation omega d is equal to 1800 multiplied by 1 upon 12 so the output gear speed gear d is 150 rpm and to determine part 3 I'm going to use velocity arrows and we can show that the output shaft rotates in the same direction as the input shaft. So using my velocity arrows, if I say gear A rotates in a positive direction, then gear B must rotate in a negative direction. But because B and C are on the same shaft, gear C is also rotating in a negative direction. So that means gear D must be rotating in a positive direction. So we can clearly see using what's called velocity arrows that the input shaft and the output shaft rotate in the same direction. Here's exercise 3G. We've got to determine the gear ratio of the train shown in figure 3. That's shown below for reference. And given the input speed is 40 rpm, that's gear A. We've got to determine the output speed omega f for gear f and determine the direction of the output shaft relative to the input shaft. In other words, are the input and output shafts rotating in the same direction? The question states the gear ratio and the output shaft speed and states that the output shaft rotates in the opposite direction to the input shaft. Just note the number of teeth are shown in the diagram or gear A, gear B, gear C, D, E and gear F. I'd encourage you to stop the presentation, attempt exercise 3G, but the full solution is shown on the following slide. Here's exercise 3G, the solution. I'll let you review the solution at your own pace, but firstly calculated the gear ratio capital G, and that evaluated to 3 upon 20. And next we calculated the speed of gear F. We know the gear ratio from above. I'm using here the relationship between the output and input speeds to calculate the output speed, which was 6 RPM. And item 3 labelled here, using velocity arrows, we find that the output gear has opposite sense to the input gear. Here are the velocity arrows. Here's question 1G. I'll let you read the question and attempt the question at your own pace. The answers for the gear ratio and the driven gear wheel speed shown here. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt question 1G, but the full work solution shown on the following slide. Question 1G, here's the solution. I'll let you review this at your own pace. Firstly, we calculated the gear ratio and we found the output gear speed. Here's question 2G. Again, I'll let you read this at your own pace. Answer for the gear ratio, the speed of gear E here. And the sense of rotation all stated in the bracket. I encourage you to start the presentation. Attempt question 2G. But again, solutions shown on the following slide. Here's question 2G. I've shown the solution to the stage where you can insert the values of the number of teeth on the gear wheels to calculate the gear ratio. I'll let you finish the solution from there. Question 3G for you to read at your own pace. Just note there is a hint in the question. Answer state in the bracket. I'd encourage you to start the presentation and attempt question 3G, but the full work solution shown on the following slide. Question 3G, full solution. Let me review this at your own pace. Firstly, calculated the gear ratio and then calculated the output rotation of gear C. It was two thirds of a revolution. 
I will leave you with question four to attempt at your own pace. Answer state in the bracket. I would encourage you to stop the presentation, attempt question 4G, and I will show you a slight hint on the following slide, should you need one. Here's the hint. Hopefully you can solve question 4G from here. And finally, I'll leave you with question 5 to attempt at your own pace. Again, the answers are shown in the bracket here. So I said at the beginning of the presentation, this is essentially the same as the previous gear presentation on our YouTube channel. It's just that the definition of the gear ratio is inverted. And that's because of the formula on the awarding body sheet. And here's the bibliography used to help generate this presentation, which I hope has been of interest to you. And thank you for viewing.